welcome back. We are talking naps again today. And this time we are talking all about the dropping down to one nap per day. So that's when we're going from two naps down to one nap. Now this one can take a bit of time and it can cause a few hiccups along the way. But don't worry, I'm gonna address all of that with you today and give you the tools you need to make a smooth transition down to one nap per day. Okay, so delving into the first question, which is when. When does that happen? When do our toddlers or little ones feel ready to drop down to just having one nap a day instead of two? Okay, usually it's between 13 and 17 months. Occasionally we see signs around 12 months, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're ready to make the move. And sometimes little ones aren't ready until closer to 18 months. But typically between 13 and 17 months, um, we see loads and loads of this around 15 months. So it's a bit of a wider window than the last nap transition. It can take longer, this nap transition. It can take a while. So don't despair. And if you do have a little one that um, seems to want to make this transition on the earlier side, 12 or 13 months, you're more likely to be in for a slightly longer ride with this where it might progress a bit and then go back a bit. So it might take a little bit longer. So hold on to those two naps for as long as your little one seems to be needing them and taking them. If they are enjoying three hours a day split over two sleeps in the day and sleeping well at night, then don't change it. Don't change it just because their age changes or just because their friends are changing. Um, stick with it because they're telling you that that's what suits them right now. But you might start to see some signs. What are the signs? Um, okay, what you're gonna see is probably one or the other of the naps becoming a little bit shorter in length or challenging to settle. So it, it could be the first nap or the second nap. Quite often it is the second nap but it could be the first nap. It might be that they take the first nap and they don't have quite so long, and then they really struggle to settle for the second nap. That's quite a common example. And you just know that something's changing, something's shifting. Now, I always like to give you what not to use as a sign, and don't confuse this with um, a, actually a timing issue, because sometimes people think, oh, we're, we're ready to drop down to one nap now, when actually they're not ready to drop to one nap, they just have the timing of the two naps a little bit off. And so um, if the timing is off, you might find that you have bedtime struggles and fussiness at bedtime, and it's because the little one is either overtired or undertired at bedtime, but that could be because the naps aren't placed quite right for them at this point in time, and that they're not having adequate awake windows, or they're too long or too short, and so it could be a timing thing. So always look at that first, but when we're on a two nap schedule, we're usually looking for about three hours in total, and no more than three hours awake between sleeps, assuming they're having a good full nap. Short awake windows if the nap is shorter than we would like. Um, so just be aware that sometimes a timing issue can confuse us and let, and let us think that actually little one's ready to drop a nap. And that might be the worst thing to do. So just be sure. How do you go about it? Um, what, what steps do you take? Well, there are a few uh, ideas and things do work differently for different people, but I would definitely, definitely prefer um, my favorite approach, which is where you nudge the first nap, so the morning nap, um, later. So you extend the morning wakeful window. Uh, so instead of waking up at let's say 6.30 and then nap time happening around 9, 9.30, we start pushing that out. Now we want to push it to as close to midday as we can get it. But sometimes, especially if this is early stages with your little one making the transition, they're not quite ready to go all the way to midday. And you might find that they are falling asleep on their early lunch. <laughs> um, so it might be 11, might even be 10.30. If you can't get them to sort of 10.30 or 11, they're possibly not actually ready yet to make this move. And you do still need the morning nap, which means you're going to need a second nap. It might just mean you need to do a good solid morning nap, a shorter afternoon nap for the, for the time being, and wait till they're really ready. But once they're ready, if you can push that first nap out um, and get it as close up to midday as you can, see how long they sleep for that nap. If it's more than two hours, you're winning. 
<laughs> if it's less than two hours, they're gonna need another sleep. Um, but if we're getting there, we're consolidating their day sleep into one good big nap, then we may find that we don't need an afternoon top up or a second nap. If they, so what, what options can you have with this? So if they go to sleep, um, you've pushed out that wakeful window, they go to sleep um, and they don't have a great nap, put a second nap in, just think, oh yeah, they had about an hour, so let's give it two hours and then we'll try for another nap and just see what they do. There is a lot of testing and experimenting when you're going through this transition and it's like no two days are the same. You have to be prepared and armed with the knowledge of what to do if, and then take each day as it comes and go, okay, well, this happens, so I do this next. So take each sleep as it comes. If the nap is great, say they do two and a half hours, three hours, then boom, you've got one nap and you don't need to do a second nap. So just take them through to bedtime. If the wake window is good, fine. If they are exhausted, just bring bedtime a little bit earlier and, and that will work and that will be fine. And they'll soon build on the stamina to go for those longer chunks of wakeful time either side of their one good nap in the middle of the day. It does sit best when they are firmly on one nap a day, it does sit best um, around 12 to 12.30 for it starting and for a good two, like two hours is the minimum. Initially I'd be looking for two and a half hours, some will do three, but I would still be looking for around two and a half hours until they're at least two years of age. And once they're age two, it might start to shrink down to two hours and a steady two hours throughout most of age two is perfectly, perfectly normal and suitable. Okay, so, Backup plan is always, you can slot in an extra nap, you can slot in a power nap, a push chair nap, a motion nap, or whatever you need. Early bedtime, but no more than an hour earlier for bedtime. There is another approach that you may find helpful to know, um, but it is a bit risky. And this is where you limit the first nap. So instead of letting them take their full first nap, you cut it a little short and you actually wake them from it in order to then get that second nap in, but without them having too much and it just, it, it slowly shifts. Now, the reason I don't like this approach and I find it risky is because if you wake a baby, a sleeping toddler from their morning nap, when they were quite happily sleeping and wanted to be asleep, not only will they probably be quite cranky, but they may have taken the edge off enough and then it might sabotage nap two from happening at all. And then you're like, well, we might not get enough sleep at all today. And so it can be a risky game. Um, likewise, if a little one nods off, say in the car on the way home from somewhere in the morning, even five, 10 minutes of a little snooze, you might think, oh no, that's just totally meant that the nap is now gonna be impossible. I'm sure we've all done that thing where we get home and we're like, okay, well, we were gonna go for nap time, but I know they won't settle now, and you end up sitting in the car for a bit <laughs> with them just to let them have a nice bit of a sleep. So yeah, so if you ca capping naps and waking little ones up for naps, there is a time and a place for it. We call it nap manipulation. Um, I would only probably do that under the guidance of a certified sleep specialist who can, give you the clues as to when and when not to do it because like I said otherwise you might end up cutting short on really well needed sleep. Okay so yes I was going to just close off by that reminding you that an early bedtime is always 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 a good thing to do and you might find that for some weeks when you're going through this transition that you're using an early bedtime. Don't worry it's not forever you will be able to nudge back to the usual bedtime eventually once you've got that solid one nap a day in place. Um, but early bedtime up to an hour early is fine and it might just be what you need to do for a while. And if you know people find it inconvenient because they're like, well, by the time I get home from work or we have dinner and it can sometimes be a little bit annoying, just remember it's not forever and it's for the greater good. It's for the health and brain development of your little one. It's for the peaceful night's sleep for your whole family. So it's kind of a little inconvenient, but it has a huge payoff. Okay. I hope you found this episode helpful. Um, in my next episode, I am going to talk about the next transition, which is when you drop the nap completely and you go from one nap to no naps. And there's a big warning coming up with that one. So I will see you over there in the next episode. And thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.